FRG Ministry presents the Catholic Influencers Podcast. Join me, Alyssa Aegis, and my co-hosts, Father Rob Gallia and Justine Cumbo, as we break open the upcoming Sunday Mass readings and discuss relevant topics and life issues from a Catholic perspective. For a shorter, more reflective explanation of the Gospels, be sure to check out our sister podcast, Catholic Influencers, Father Rob Gallia Homilies. Seven. Sete. <laughs> Seba. <laughs> They're the other, and the other two languages I know, so I'm done. <laughs> seven is Australian for seven. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, today we're reflecting a little bit on um, continuing on Timothy. I'm, I'm loving Timothy. Like It's, it's cool. been really good. I love Timothy. You know, I love connections and I just <laughs> love how even like you would have never have known this, like going to mass. Yeah. The second reading has such like a chronology to it. Yes. It's really cool. It's been an amazing, like intensive experience, isn't it? Even as we've been filming um, and recording these podcasts, I've just intensively kind of I feel like I'm walking alongside Paul yeah. and mm-hmm. Timothy because it's not just one week. It's been uh, several weeks now. So. And there's a, there's a lot of repetition. So like even the way the church goes, I'm not talking about liturgical seasons, but liturgically we go through micro seasons as well like bible studies i don't know if you've ever been to a um uh, i don't know even seen on tv you know like a um a pentecostal church and they say this these next few months i'm going to take you through the book of whatever mm-hmm. i'm going to take you through holiness in the 21st century <laughs> i'm going to take you to this and this is what the church does it takes us through a sort of seasons of of bible study of seasons of of trying to understand the depth of the word of god and i uh, if, if you thought like over the last few weeks the topics the themes mm-hmm. that uh, um the church is talking about it's about being bold being strong being encouraged like that keep strong because it's going to be difficult times the end times there was even before that it is even the all new and that's the gospel it talks a lot about the end times and about being ready and not being and not denying me and so it just keeps on and on and on it's uh, and just because the church wants us to to learn things in, in and out of seasons okay but Let's <laughs> talk a little small talk. Okay, here it is. If you could go on a road trip with anyone in history, who would it be? I like immediately, I didn't get to thought of a few people. I, I didn't get to meet um, a couple of my grandparents ever. And so I've just heard these amazing stories. So if I had to pick one, I'd just start with my Nanu Nikolai. Um, apparently he was really, really short, but he was very funny, super fun and always bringing like new things home every night. And I would just love to have a good good chat with him and a good catch up with him. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Was he from Sijui by any chance? No, he was from Halua. Oh, okay. Because Nikolai, there's a um, un- usually Maltese people who are Nicole um, are usually from Sijui. It's a very small country <laughs> <laughs> because of the p- the parish dedicated to Saint Nicole. Yeah. yeah, good to know. How about you, Lisa? <laughs> um, well, I was thinking of like my musical like influences. I'd love to go on a road trip with them, but I'm also terrified of that because, like, what if they're not as nice as what I <laughs> envision them to be? High maintenance. My goodness, you yeah. have to stop at every petrol station. <laughs> Um, have a rider. Yeah, no, but I'd love to like. Yeah. But then again, I also know they probably wouldn't want to talk music either. Like, if they're anything like me, like I, I love what I do, but sometimes I just like to switch off and not talk about it. Yeah, and who would your musical like if you had to choose someone? Tina Arena. Okay. I knew you were gonna she's in history, but she's still alive. That? She's still alive, but you yeah, know, yeah, she's in history. Well, that would be enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's oh, good. So you'd sit down. Well, well, so that's like a bucket list thing. Um, for for me, I think it would be like a close friend of mine who died um, a few years ago, Father Chris Ray. Um, I just you, it's not because I, I would say anything. It's just like I used to love our road trips, mm. and so just to um, I used to go. Him and I used to go on holiday, and uh, on holiday I don't I like to go on holiday alone. So I travel around the world alone, and so. But the only person I used to travel with was Father Chris because he was. Like, we'd meet in the morning, we'd meet for breakfast, not talk all day, and then maybe meet for dinner. It's your, like, perfect day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the rest of the day I we're alone. I couldn't think of anything worse. <laughs> no, I, I know, I know, I can imagine. But that's, for me, that's an ideal holiday. And yeah, we used to go on road trips and then just talk, and then just for two, three hours not talk again. So, uh, yeah, I just love to hang out with him again. Oh. Funny, we're doing a podcast and you have to talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't mind talking, but anyway. 
But anyway, let's hear from our sponsors. Encounter by FRG Ministry presents our online subscription package. As a member, you will receive digital on-demand access to Encounter's growing library of online courses. Encounter and Encounter Youth online courses cover teaching, devotional, and practical elements of the Catholic faith to help individuals, teachers, students, and parishes across the world grow in their faith and understanding of the Catholic Church and their relationship with Jesus Christ. Current titles include Knowing Mary, School of Prayer, Introduction to the Bible, The Mass, and more, with new courses being added regularly. All Encounter courses include high-definition videos with expert and engaging speakers, testimonies from everyday Catholics, and downloadable content including interactive PDF guides, prayer cards, and wallpapers. These courses are also accredited for professional development for Catholic education staff in Australia. All Encounter Youth courses include teaching videos, interactive student and teacher PDFs with lesson plans, and guided prayer and reflection. For more information about enrolment and subscription options, head to www.encountercourses.com slash subscription. Be sure to follow us on social media on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter at Encounter Courses. So we're going to jump straight into the second reading for this week's upcoming Mass, which is the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Second reading comes from 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 14 to chapter 4 verse 2. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. All the Word of God inspired. That's interesting, eh? That um, there's so much, like when you study theology, there's so much. Like the longest course you could study in Rome, like as as a priest, the longest doctorate you can study in theology is actually scripture. Because um, it's understanding the canon, the authority of the scripture. Why are certain books, like there were many letters written, you know, actually St. Paul might have written more letters and there there was like we talked last time about the gospel according to Thomas. Why are some considered authority, like part of the canon, and some are not? And there's a whole study about that and how the Jewish scripture was chosen as well. There are other books as well, the deuterocanonical books that are, haven't made it there, like the Dead Sea Scrolls. You know, why aren't they in the scripture? Well, there's a, it's interesting, but what St. Paul is talking about is the Jewish scripture. So basically our Old Testament is saying this is all inspired by God. But and then he was the one who, with the capital T tradition, started to write the, the New Testament. Um, and in fact, half of the, um, if not more than half of the New Testament is his writings. But I don't think that it was everything that he wrote that actually made it into the scripture. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, this, this text is actually one of the major texts that contributes to our church's teaching on the fact that all scripture is divinely inspired. It's the inspired word of God. I think that's pretty cool. It definitely is. Um, um, and what does inspired mean? Eh? It means to, to, to in, infused with the spirit, mm. inspirare, infused with breath, with the breath of God. Mm. So when we read the word of God, the breath of God um, inspires us and, and causes us to catch the breath of God. But you and I know we've been to Mass <laughs> and we've listened to the Word of God and it has given us no breath. Mm-hmm. Yes, we walked out and thinking, this is boring. I can't even understand half of the, the words that are being pronounced. But it's about uh, being able to reflect on the Word of God, being able to, to contemplate, to study it and to, to pray with it as well. Yeah. 
Um, let's jump straight in. Um, one of the very first lines in this, it says to hold on to the faith and the teaching that you once learned. Um, and straight away when I read this, I was just thinking of the importance of passing on the faith. So the role that parents and teachers and mentors have in passing on the faith to other people. So um, again, Paul is still telling Timothy not to be shaken by any false teachings, but hold firm to that faith and that teaching that you once learned. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he's using that, those past tense words like learned and believed, we can really, um, it, this basically shows us that he's referring to a past event. So we know Timothy's faith, it, it was a gift from God, but humans did play a role in that learning. Um, Paul wasn't the only or well, the first teacher that Timothy learned the faith from. Timothy learned the faith from his... His mama. Mum. His mama. And how yeah. important it is, eh? So sometimes, in, with even within Catholic education, we think, no, the school, I'm sending my child to a Catholic school and they're going to teach them the faith. No. Faith begins at home. You, as a parent, need to teach your children the scripture. Aunties, uncles, you know. Um, we're, we're all aunties and <laughs> uncles here. And it is our responsibility to teach the faith. Grandma, grand, grandpa, parents, to teach the children the word of God. Because at the end of the day, they're going to... We don't want it to be an academic thing. That's right. It's, yeah. a, it's about an encounter. And it, we, more encounters more likely to happen at home than it is at school. Yeah. And I think that was the most one of the things I sort of gleaned from, from this is that owning your faith for yourself is so, so important. And um, Paul was obviously very aware that he the end was very near for him. And he was trying to convict and encourage and exhort Timothy to really own um, and reckon his faith as as fact as his truth um, and not as something that was dependent or reliant on Paul or dependent and reliant on what his mother had taught him or you know maybe you yourself listening to the podcast maybe you've come up through the faith in your family or maybe you're someone like Shia LaBeouf who you know in recent history we've heard in, in the news that he's come to faith and there were all these people investing in his life but what makes the difference is not the people who are just signposts it's the person who they're pointing to mm -hmm. and so really being convicted and convinced and making that decision for yourself to follow Jesus is so important and I think that's what Paul you know given in light of the fact that he's probably going to leave this earth super soon wants Timothy to really own is that decision for Christ himself. Yes, and uh, and the decision for Christ again comes with the immersion in the word of God, knowing the word of God, knowing Christ, knowing the, the, the economy of salvation, how God impacted humanity and how God is in pursuit of people. And I think ignorance, as Saint Jerome used to say this, ignorance of scripture is ignorance of God. So if you don't know scripture, you don't know God. You might think you know God because you've heard the priests talk about God. You might think you know God because you heard your teachers talking about God. You might think you know God because you've watched the series on The Chosen. But you see, if you really want to know God, you need to immerse yourself in the scripture. And not, I'm not talking about picking up a Bible and reading, but picking up a Bible and contemplating and re and. Um, meditating on the word of God and seeing what the word of God, what God is saying through his word to me, to you. And that's what we call, you see the, the word of God held is called the logos, the written word of God, logos. But the logos is not going to impact us. The logos impacts us when it becomes flesh, when it becomes um, hermatos, when it becomes uh, uh, the word of God that can really um, impact our lives. That I, Reading a scripture and all of a sudden you're thinking, wow, you know, it's convicting me. Something's happening. The word of God is changing me. Yeah. Um, we've been talking over the last few weeks about like endurance um, and, you know, how, how we kind of persevere in the, in the Christian life. Um, and scripture plays a huge, huge role in that. Um, mm -hmm. No matter the task, scripture is the manual. And so it kind of serves these two purposes. It trains a person in righteousness and it equips them for the for the mission that they've been given to, um, yeah, pass on the faith. Um what was I going to say? I, I love how you said, like, it's the manual, you know? So this is one, the acronym, I don't know if you've ever heard this, I'm sure you have, B-I-B-L-E, Basic, Basic Instructions, instructions before, before Leaving Earth. Earth. That's a very good one. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so that's the manual if you want to l know the Word of God and you want to know how to, to um, leave Earth, how to get to heaven, Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth, the Read Your Bible. Yeah, and just to, to go back to that endurance point, um, the word of God is the sword of the spirit by which the warrior will carry on the spiritual battle. So we, we read about how the word of God is the sword of the spirit in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. 
the word of God's going to sustain you and be that weapon to to help you persevere and endure in this. Is this where life. he mentions the sword, the sword of the spirit? Because there's yes. also yeah, that's beautiful as well. Putting the armor of God as well, and then the sword of the spirit is going to keep us. The word of God is also a defense against the devil, the attacks of the devil. Because even Jesus used it as a as a an attack on the devil when he was in, in the um, in the desert. Mm-hmm. So the devil, first of all, used it as a sword against Jesus, and then what Jesus would quote back scripture. Now, it's not to have a debate, with the, the scriptural debate with the devil, but mm-hmm. if, you see, this is if you, you want to get confused, and the world confuses us by using scripture to manipulate us. So we need to know the word of God. The world knows the Bible. The world knows it. So uh, you need to know it even more, even better, so that you can defend yourself. And this is the sword that um, we can defend ourselves with. Yeah, and, mm-hmm. and when do we preach this word, this word that has effect on our lives? When do we preach it? Well, in this scripture, it says, be prepared to preach the word in season and out of season. And he goes on to say, correct, rebuke and encourage. And, and my favorite part is, but with great patience and careful instruction. So we're not we're not going out there like sometimes, um, you know, the armor of God. We can sort of conjure up images of going out to fight a vicious battle uh, that. You know, we are in battle, but that's not how we are to use the word of God, the word of God. Bible bashing yeah, type of thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it speaks for itself. It is effective in and of itself. So we don't need to hit people over the head with it, but we can share it um, when it's convenient and when it's not convenient. Like as people have decided to follow God, we don't get to pick and choose when we, we do it. If God puts it on your heart, that's when you preach. It says here, yeah, be prepared in season and out of season. But yeah, just really... Um, encourage just a a great listening of of when you do preach it whether it is to uh, rebuke or correct or encourage that it is spoken with great patience and careful instruction Mm -hmm. it's part of the same sentence Um, and a really cool quote from um, Pope Paul VI that I think really affirms this uh, is where he says modern man listens more willingly to witnesses than to teachers and if he does listen to teachers it's because they are witnesses and I've been in a lot of conversations where I've just you know, been so put off by the way that people uh, call out other people's sin or call out, you know, the secular people by the way that they've spoken to them. And it's just so off-putting. And it's, gosh, like if you actually just inserted some um, great patience and careful instruction in what you said, it would be received um, far greater than, yes. than the way that, the harsh way that you, you're saying it. And yeah, exactly. But uh, speaking out truth, but speaking out truth as well with love. And part of love is experiencing together. It's about recognizing your humanity, your brokenness mm-hmm. as well. And uh, speaking from a place of experience of, of redemption, you know, knowing that I have received the light of Christ. And so I want nothing more than for others to step into that light. Mm, it's great. Another quote I think that touches on that was from St. Thomas Aquinas. And he said, to convert somebody go and take them by the hand and guide them. Mm -hmm. Go Mm -hmm. alongside. So if you're willing to spit out truth, you need to make sure that you're willing to walk the mile with that person. Yes. And that's where the truth is going to settle into their bones, into their soul. If, If you've, you know, you've walked the mile with them, you've listened to their story and you've journeyed with them. And again, the word of God is not only about pointing people to truth, but it's also pointing us to truth. Mm. A beautiful Bible verse is um, Psalm 119, um, verse 9. I think it says, how, does a, how can a young man or a young woman keep herself pure? And he's talking again um, to, to us. By, and the, that was a, a question. And then the answer is, by keeping according to thy word. And you cannot keep pure, you cannot keep on the narrow path if you don't know the word of God. How do you know to keep according to the word of God if you don't know the word of God? Yeah. This production would not be possible without the support of our FRG ministry partners and donors. Your ongoing support ensures that our online masses, online courses, podcasts, TV programs, school, youth and parish outreaches continue to reach millions of people across the world. Please prayerfully consider giving a one-off donation or becoming an ongoing ministry partner and join us in our mission to share the love of Jesus and His message of hope to the ends of the earth. Find out more at frgministry.com slash donate. Reality Check
<laughs> Catholics and the Bible. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Do they even like go together? You yeah. even go there. You don't even go there. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even go here. <laughs> I feel like my accents are way better. Than yours, <laughs> <just> yeah. <laughs> Catholics in the Bible. What's the reality of that? Are we supposed to lead with the Bible? Is it supposed to be a big part of our life? Is it a big part of our tradition? When I when I give um, staff formation, I usually go, go, arrive with a huge bunch of books. I go with encyclicals. I go with the Catechism of the Catholic Church. I go with a Bible. I go um, with um, spiritual reading books. And a whole like the canon law, I go with um, <laughs> the books of the the Vatican Council, and I spread them on the table. I say, okay, put them in line according to authority, to authority, and they put it. And sometimes they put canon law first, and then they put the Bible, and then they put this. And the, but one thing for sure, I'll sort of give it away, is that the scripture is the underlying of everything. The church, the Catholic church, is built on the word of God, on the Logos the, uh, and the Hermatos, okay? So everything you have, from the, the uh, structure of your church to, to every liturgy, standing, sitting, kneeling, that happens, everything is based, everything is based, all the Catholic church teachings are based on scripture. If anything within the Catholic church contradicts the word of God, then it has no place in the church. Yeah, well. It should mm. never, ever contradict the word of God. So even from the decorations, again, to go to the stained glass windows, they were there to proclaim the word of God. The, the statues are there, again, t- to live according to the word of God, to keep ourselves pure, holy, and focused. And sometimes through history, we have re- uh, sort of ad- adored the message rather than the, the, the actual the one Jesus who is the messenger, who is the per- message personified, but also that the the scripture is very much infused in our liturgies. You know, if you go to a mass every day for three years, you would have read pretty much the entire Bible. So we proclaim the word of God. We have three readings. That's <laughs> that's a lot of readings yeah. in the scripture. But I'll, like, even four. I'll, I'll talk to, to my experience a little bit of that. Like there was a point in my life where I was able to go to daily mass, and I kind of thought that was enough. Mm. Um, but then I actually I went to the Holy Land, and things came alive in a whole new way for me. Um, and then I started doing this podcast and studying mm. and learning all the insights. Like I think sometimes as Catholics we get a bit of a bad rep with our knowledge of the Bible because. And even when I talk to different people who may not even necessarily share the faith, oh, you go by the book. It's actually, it's a collection of books. Like we know this, but mm. it's a good little reminder of that. And to even just know the the narrative story of the Bible, like if you read it from qu- like start to end, like of course you're going to get confused because it's not meant to be read that way. Um, learning the narrative story really helps with our understanding of scripture as well. Yeah, and I think it's, it's an obvious observation to make, but it's one thing to go to mass um, and, and to hear the readings or to know that we have daily scripture, which is really, really beautiful. It's really lovely, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but if you're not reading it, it, like it, for you to personally sit with and encounter the scriptures in your own time is almost a completely different experience. Both are valid and beautiful and wonderful because it is the word of God, but to really take it into your own life um, is so important. I think sometimes where Catholics go wrong is, you know, we, we, we don't believe in sola scriptura, you know, we believe in scripture and tradition. But I think that somewhere along the way, as you say, at, at our very core is scripture. Everything is founded mm-hmm. on scripture, but somewhere along the way, we've got like these two split parts mm-hmm. they're not converging lines anymore you know whereas we kind of have we could either heavily really lean on tradition or i don't know heavily really lean on scripture but yes. the emphasis on on scripture i think is far less perhaps because maybe we take it for granted that it is yes. something that's read at mass we do have the daily readings it is in the stained glass windows in in, in imagery um yeah so a bit of it and it, uh, i think a lot of the emphasis on the scripture, less emphasis on the scripture in a sense in a personal way is because we have the Eucharist and when we have the Eucharist, that becomes the only meeting, the only gathering that we go to when it's not meant to be so. Yes, the scripture, the, the, uh, the Eucharist is the source and summit of our faith. If you're going to give up anything, don't give up the Eucharist. Mm-hmm. That's the, but the life of the church shouldn't be just... And not just the Eucharist, but it shouldn't be only the Eucharist. It should be Eucharist also, and then uh, Bible studies, 
um, and we should be attending um, sort of prayer meetings. We should be attending these things mm. because uh, uh, the the Eucharist alone um, and and not the meditation of the Word can, in a sense, take us away from other beautiful gifts yeah. that are given. And, and again, the if you're going to give up anything. Don't give up the Eucharist, so make sure you come to the Eucharist and the source and summit of the faith. And we have in the Eucharist, in the Mass, we have the Scripture, we have everything. But, again, and as Alyssa and Justine were saying, it's we need to meditate on the Word of God. We need to own the Word of God. We need to make sure you have a Bible, buy a Bible, dust off a Bible. And if you have an old King James Version that your grandparents or great-grandparents gave you and it's in the Bible, it's in, in, in your lounge room, that's fantastic, but even I find that too complicated, the King James Version. Go and buy a Bible that is a, a modern translation, a new translation like the N, N, um, NJSV, NKSV or something like that, K, KSV anyway, and then the um, NIV, the Catholic Version as well. Yeah. So make sure you have a Bible, read the Bible, reflect on the Word of God, dust it off and read it every day. You were talking about um, like the Eucharist and I was just thinking as you were saying that, our sacramental life can become even more enriched when it is accompanied by an in-depth study of Absolutely. scripture. So all those things you're saying, Father Rob, I can, I'm sure the both of us would vouch to do it. Yeah, I think yeah. someone like um, Scott Hahn is at Rome Sweet Home, mm -hmm. wrote that you know from his Protestant background, went to mass and was completely overwhelmed with how much scripture he found in the mass. And this was someone who knew the Bible, mm -hmm. who believed sola scriptura, and then came to faith through that. Like it's just, it yeah. is in our blood, and and as you say, it can bring our, our faith life it does it brings it to a whole new life I love sitting with my bible and a journal because um, you can study the bible and I really appreciate that in this podcast that we studied the bible so there are things called commentaries mm -hmm. and it's just so enlightening like things that I would completely miss because they're just historical critical uh, information it's so important. So you can study the Bible in that way, but even praying with the Bible is different to studying it, of just sitting with a scripture and just praying and, you know, whether it strikes you and is really relevant to your life or asking God to show you, you know, what does this scripture mean to me? And praying with scripture like that um, is just so important to my, my personal prayer yeah. life. I was going to say, um, I don't know if anyone uses the Hello app. They've got some guided lecture divinas where you can... Um, the scriptures read to you twice and you've got time to really reflection mm. reflect on it it's guided um and i've loved to like read other people's kind of things that have stood out for them it's com been completely different to mine like um yeah it really is a beautiful experience and also uh, just to point out a few other things that we can do to get to know the word of god first of all starting with uh, getting yourself a bible but also to be able to reflect and to do the Lectio Divina. Also, if you want a guided way of doing it, we have a course called the School of Prayer as well, where we go through a Bible study. We teach you how to study the scripture. Go to encountercourses.com. Um, but also um, commentaries, podcasts, Bible in a Year as well. Um, Father Mike Schmitz as well has that. Um, and one of the greatest ways, I think, for the Bible to come alive is for you to take a pilgrimage seriously to the Holy Land. Because the Word of God becomes alive there. It's a Bible study in itself to be there. Absolutely. Is this the part where you all tell me I, I get a free ticket to your pilgrimage coming up? Well, it's already <laughs> happened. It's <laughs> happening now, as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. But uh, uh, yes, that this is uh, such a beautiful opportunity for us as well. God has given us this, uh, this place, this historical place that God... Uh, Jesus himself lived and worked and and had his whole earthly life. Yeah. And I was just going to say as well, um, if you're listening to this podcast, you, like you're already taking that step to want to go more in depth to scripture. Good. So good on you um, and know that we are praying for you and please keep us in your prayers as we continue to record this season. Mm. Exactly. So thank you again for the, for the listening to us. We, If you want to know more about um, our ministry, go to frgministry.com. If you want to know, learn more about the podcast, how to stay in touch with us, frgministry.com forward slash podcast. Social media. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. All those links are at our website, frgministry.com forward slash podcast. Keep in touch with us. We'd love to hear your insights as well. Send us a comment, send us an email, podcast at frgministry.com. And we hope you have a wonderful and blessed week. It's been a joy. We'll catch you next week. God bless. Bye.